Howdy healers, welcome to Zero to KSM Hero, a series where I'll be attempting the Keystone Master Challenge in patch 9.1.5 on a brand new healer. The rules are simple. For the Alliance, least favored healer, least popular covenant, only moderate help from main character allowed, no linking Raider IO to main character, hugging only, and finally the challenge must be finished before posting the first video to avoid any external help or assistance, and of course for the sake of integrity. Hello everyone and welcome in again for episode 12. We are moving at the pace of a snail. We are moving like molasses in January. But you know what? Sometimes it has to be like that. I definitely was not very confident in my ability to heal. And the last two dungeons, both of which were untimed. Granted, my first untimed dungeons, by the way. But, um... Yeah, because they were untimed, I was definitely feeling <laughs> very discouraged. I think that that's the best way I could put it, and honestly, watching them back, like, there are definitely a lot of things I could have done better to make things easier on myself, like, you know, use Cocoon every now and then. Anyway, after my night of failed runs, I felt pretty discouraged, and I went to work the next morning, and my coworker, who plays WoW as well, and mains Mistweaver Monk for Mythic Raiding, talked to me about it, and after our discussion about, you know, like, what might make it a little easier and, like, in which circumstances might it actually be your fault versus people in the groups, I decided that I needed more keybinds because I had a couple of cooldowns, and not just Cocoon, by the way, but, like, Yulon and Revival, that maybe I wasn't pressing as often as I should have been, so I went through and decided that I'm just going to get rid of keybinds that I don't press, right? So 6 through uh, 0, the dash, the equal sign. It's not that I never use any of these. Like, sometimes I would use equal sign for, like, milling or disenchanting. But this character doesn't do that, and there's no reason to have those keys taken up by abilities that like I literally have to click because my hand can't reach that far reliably. Like yeah, I can totally press like 7 on the keyboard but reliably without looking? No. And I'm a good typist for what it's worth. Like, you know, I used to type 120 words a minute. I obviously have been typing for a long time. I'm good at it. In fact, I need it for my job. So it's one of those things where, like, just when you're playing the game, the way that your hand is positioned, uh, you may not be able to reach, like, keys after five very well. So I was like, you know what? I never, I almost never reliably press these buttons. I'll press the wrong one sometimes. So I'm just going to do away with them. So I took away six through zero and the dash and equal sign and instead replaced them with E because I don't use the strafe buttons, I use the right mouse button and DNA to strafe. And E is just one of those keys where, unlike Q, it's like really easy to press because it's right there. And I already use R as a keybind and F. And E is just even easier to hit than those. So I decided I'll make E a keybind. And then I'll keep X as expel harm, but I'll move it to the main bar where it's easier to see. And then I will use Shift F, Shift R, Shift G, Shift T, and Shift E because these are all key binds that I use normally. So why not just add a Shift modifier to those? And boom, I have a much, much better setup. Is it perfect? No. <laughs> because I still struggle with my physical limitations when it comes to things like having limited mobility in my hands but it's still a start and it's way better than it was so I'll take it. I'll take it and I'm gonna like do one of those things like as I'm playing honestly where some like my keybinds change a little bit because the important thing is if you notice you're not using a keybind, especially one that isn't attached to a healing add-on. So, like, Cocoon is attached to Voodoo, so there's not a whole lot I can do to, like, 
make my brain use it except stare right at my weak aura where it's clearly not on cooldown and remember to press my keybind for it. Um, for everything else, though, it's like, yeah, okay, if a different keybind is going to make it easier to press or better to press or whatever, then it's totally worth just changing it up. Like, you might as well. What's the worst that's going to happen? And especially if it's on a bar like Domino's or whatever, you can just, like, the worst that's going to happen is you won't remember the keybind and you can click it. So, yeah, you know, I know clicking is, like, bad or whatever, but you've seen me do it plenty. I just... Sometimes I struggle with reaching keys, so that's why I have the ones I'm more likely to click up at the top there, where they're more in range of being clicked. So I'm not, like, traveling my mouse all the way down to the bottom of the screen to click on something. Alright, so, after I get my keybind sorted out a little bit, I decide that Grievous was like kind of a literal nightmare not being able to see like how many stacks of it were on people or whatever like obviously if they have below 90 percent health like they have a grievous stack like that's very clear but having an idea of like exactly how many stacks helps you kind of see like about how much damage you're going to be suffering through here real quick so if you see that somebody has like three stacks of it and they're at, like, I don't know, half health, for example, like, they're in danger, and you should probably get on healing them, whereas with, if you're not tracking it, all you can, all you know is that they have it, but you don't know, like, how much damage they're going to take in the next five or six seconds, right? So, I do get up Necrotic and Grievous on my voodoo bars so that I can see where, <laughs> like, how many stacks people have of, of these, because I know Necrotic's going to be, you know, coming up again in the near future. So if you want to know how to do that with voodoo, I did make a little guide on how to set that up in a bouquet. So hopefully it helps you if you are interested in setting that up. <clears throat> All right, so to finish things off, I did go and finish doing my time walking dungeons. I'm at a gear level where I still could use the 226 upgrade. So like if I get lucky, of course, which, you know, sometimes you're not lucky, but I went ahead and finished it off. It's like five dungeons. It's not that big of a deal. I just did the last three I needed. Unfortunately, all I got was a one-handed mace, which I didn't have the appearance of. So I, I guess I'll consider that a win. I'm not, like, a huge transmog collector. I usually am just selling transmog to people, but I, I'll i take it. It's better than nothing, um, but it's definitely not, like, a, an upgrade or anything. I guess if you prefer the stats on it, then it would be considered an upgrade, but, like, I don't really care that much about stats. I'm not, like, min-maxing my stats. Like, you could see my mastery is, like, 105%. <laughs> I just don't care. And actually, like, a high mastery works pretty well for the, like, s the talent build that I chose for this character. So, we'll take it. I also take this time to level alchemy, even though, to be honest with you, it's not really necessary. If you have just, like, the one skill point, you still get the two-hour flask duration, which is just... It's not necessary, but it does save you some money, and you only need the like the one skill point. So getting two hours out of a flask instead of one, especially if you're like queuing back to back mythics, I think it helps. They persist through death, so it's totally worth just getting that if you don't have a better or different profession in mind. And I also bought some enchants for my gear and weapons and stuff like that, so. Uh, is it totally necessary? No, but I'm, I'm wanting to get into 10 keys, so I figured, like, the, the very basic thing I can do is, is that. Like, I can get my gear kind of, like, better, so that I don't have to feel bad about stuff. And this is especially true of the pieces that are just, like, okay already. So, like, my weapons are okay, my bracers are legendary. My chest is a 236. So, like, if I can upgrade those things with an enchantment or something, I mean, every little bit helps, right? So, I go ahead and I do all of that before I decide to jump back into the grind <laughs> in the group finder. I do get a little bit braver here, and I apply to some, like plus tens. I'm definitely not looking to like, I don't want to say backslide, but you know what I mean? Like I'm not looking to do keys that I've already done or like to just like for extra 
keys under my belt because like I've already done, you know, some nine. So I'm, I'm really, the ideal would be to be doing something that's going to give me score at the very worst. And then at the very best, something that's like, that I haven't done yet, something higher than what I've done. So I got into a plus nine halls of atonement. And to be very clear here, even though I'm editing, like some of these dungeons I'm queuing for, I get into immediately. But then like this halls, it was like at least three or four minutes of me applying to groups that I felt would help me out. And it, you know, so it did take a little while. It does require some patience, just like the series does, honestly, since we're moving so slow. But I get into the group and we get ready to get things on the road. All right, so we've got our well-fed buff, and we've got our flask, and we have had the ready check. And people are just kind of, you know, doing their thing or whatever. So we're like, all right, we're ready. And then uh, this guy calls for a steward. We're looking good. And then a guy prepares a feast, like... When there's definitely not going to be enough time to sit and eat it. And you could think, alright, so the person that puts the key in should probably just wait for the well-fed buff to get on people. Because the table disappears and it's like a waste of a table. But, I mean, it gets us a bingo. But let's be clear here. Like, we were standing there for a little while before the guy put the feast down. He should have just put it down immediately, in my opinion. Um, alright, so this is where we run into, like, people eating cleaves and stuff like that, of course. Probably right out of the gate. But it's fine. We've got this. Our tank decided to go ahead and imprison the mob on the right over there, just to keep it out of the way. Nobody used lust or heroism or anything here, even though we have two hunters. I ring of peace the loyal beasts because I don't really know what else to do. But you can see now that now that I uh, have set up voodoo so that Grievous shows up, I can now see when people have Grievous on them. It's, it's so much better. It's so much better. Now, and when they have more than one stack, you can also see that. It should definitely help, like, prioritize people that have just more stacks. Um, and especially people that have more stacks and don't have any cooldowns. Also, you can see I'm, like, blowing through my mana already. And it's partly my own fault. Like, I didn't need to reset the statue. I don't know why I did that. I feel like now that I can see Grievous, I'm gonna, like, maybe overcompensate a little bit more than I was before. Because not seeing it is like, oh, somebody has a little bit of health. But it can be really hard to tell if they're 89% or 90%. And obviously, if they're at 89, they would have a Grievous stack. So, with my cleave healing with uh, Renewing Mists, like, healing Grievous is, it almost makes it a non affix in the sense that, like, yeah, I'm still going to blow through my mana, but it's not as if I can't spare the globals to do it. Whereas some other classes, like, I think Discipline Priests just kind of really suffer with just the way that their class works. And the fact that they have to resort to Shadow Men spam sometimes makes it really hard to just deal with Grievous. Alright, so we're getting up on this first, like, larger pool, and I don't really have any mana, so I do pop a mana pot there because, you know, I'm scared. We don't have a Cursed Dispel, which is fine. I'm, like, yelling at myself in my mind, like, use Cocoon on somebody, just just do it. Like, it, I think the issue that I have with Cocoon is for some reason my mind views it like it's a big cooldown and it's not. Alright, I did the dreaded thing that, like, Growl always complains at people for doing. Like, looking in your bags while you're playing. <laughs> 
But I, what I do is I realize that I don't have any mage food, and which is usually what I put in that slot. Like, I usually don't keep multiple keybinds for food. I just have a couple on this character because, obviously, I'm, like, healing and stuff. Um, but I realize I don't have any mage food, but I need to, to eat after combat ends. So I go ahead and, and replace the mage food on my bars with the pomegranates that you get from the vendor in Ouroboros. Alright, and since they go pull those things last, like, it actually buys me a little extra time to eat. If I was doing this now, I'd probably get up. I'd have already gotten up and mounted up and left. But I'm a little slower just because I really want to have full mana. I know that it, this is just my personal experience, of course, but like having gone from classic, like healing in classic, to this, because uh, before I came back to WoW, I was playing classic BC on a, a resto shaman, and going from like you know mana conservation in classic and then classic BC. Where your goals are, like, you know, to be very mindful of the MP5 rule and not overheal because, you know, you're going to need all your mana. Like, to go from that to, like, I'm not going to say infinite mana, but to a situation where, you know, you, you may just have to blow through your mana and hope for the best is, is wild, actually. Again, I should be cocooning somebody. Probably just the tank would be easiest. My my DPS are doing pretty good, so it's not like it's not like I'm struggling because like they're garbage here. Like as far as I'm concerned, they're fine. But I'm like just not utilizing my cooldowns very well here. Alright, so again, you can see me take the position here in halls where I fully intend to drink and then fly off the edge of this. And then realizing that, they, that they're that they gonna, like, go ahead and pull some trash, I get another, like, little drink, and then I finally use Cocoon. I, I definitely view Cocoon too much like a major cooldown, even though it's only on a two-minute cooldown, so it can be used a lot. And <laughs> it does it's not that good of a cooldown. I mean, it's better than nothing, don't get me wrong. Like, if it was like, uh, have Cocoon or don't have Cocoon, I'll take Cocoon, right? But it's definitely a situation where, like, it's only a two-minute cooldown. I should be using this, like, ten times a dungeon at least. I should just be DPSing there. I don't know why I hesitated. Probably paranoid that the tank was going to pull more. But after my last, like, two dungeons that were, like, kind of bad, actually, uh, this one feels a lot better to me. And, like, again, just... Going off of, like, the meters down there. Like, you're looking at the healing done, and you're like, yeah, the Demon Hunter is where they should be, or even higher than where they should be. So, I, I felt better after this. I was like, alright, so I'm not insane. They should be doing a lot of self-healing. It is in their rotation. And, of course, y'all agreed with me in the comments. <laughs> so that made me feel good, too. I mean, belatedly, but it did make me feel good. Alright, so I tried to grab a little time to drink here. Again, any any drinking is better than none. Alright, so we're going to make it through this. I decided to pop Yulon and probably not even going to use it right, but I'm pretending, right? I 
this group's pretty good at avoiding damage. Like, we definitely have some people that took avoidable damage, like, in the dungeon so far. But, like, you can see our interrupts. Like, we do have people that are trying to interrupt. And I'll take that any day of the week. Like, even if they stand in a couple of things, like, if they're interrupting, at least they're doing... At least I know they know where their buttons are. I guess. Am I bitter? Have I become jaded and sad after, like, years of watching people just not interrupt important spells? Yes, actually. Alright, so again, grab a drink. Even if I don't get a whole lot, I can still, it's still way better than nothing. You can get 20% mana that way pretty quick. Especially when they have the powers that give you, like, faster eating or whatever. That definitely helped out a lot due to Mistweaver just being a class that can blow through mana pretty fast. And the best part about this dungeon so far, by the way, is that I haven't, like, been seated. So, I haven't used my cheat death. Yet. So, <laughs> yet. Knock, knock. Gotta... Don't... Don't get your hopes up, I guess. I'm not getting mine up. I don't remember this dungeon that well, so... I was prepared to Ring of Peace it, but then didn't. And it was one of those situations where, like, I wasn't sure if I wanted a Ring of Peace it because I didn't want to send it flying into the Stoneborn. Tank is taking a lot of damage. But you can see our healing. Like, they're doing 5k healing. Alright, so they're ready to pull, but, like, they could see that I didn't have any mana, so they did wait a little bit. Probably not long enough. Um, I'm standing off to the side to, like, try to bait pulls over, like, in the corner or whatever. And I drink a mana pot because I am a little worried that I might need everything I can get. Uh, my biggest mistake here is not putting Mystic Touch on the boss, even though I have like, mostly physical DPS here in the group. There, I finally did it. But, like, the boss is half dead, right? So, like, it's kind of cringe. Tank is trying to get the guy in position for the, the reflac- ref the, 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 the refractions? Reflact- Refracted sunlight? Jeez. I'm just embarrassing myself today, but I'm going to leave that in the video so that the people that are dumb enough to watch the whole thing can, can see my, like, normal personality. I was an English major, by the way. Doesn't mean I can speak worth anything, though. Like my husband would say, like, you talk like you don't know anything, but you write like you do. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty accurate for me. Alright, so they want to skip. And I, I used a mana pot, so, like, I don't have anything. I let the, the hunter die because I'm figuring that, um... What I should have done is just follow, right? I should have just followed. But I didn't know what to do. Like, I... I was like, uh... Is there any way I can squeeze through these guys without, like... Pulling them? Oh, okay, so the, the DK tried to shadow meld. And it didn't work. Um, yeah, because of Grievous. I think if it was, like, one mob, it might work.
what I should have done is just gone and died on the stairs. But here's the problem with running and dying on the stairs. Nobody has a res. <laughs> so this is not the best... You know, this isn't the best situation to be in. I can't do anything. So the tank is right... And so is the DK. If it was just one mob, he probably would have been fine. The the Shadow Meld would have like hit him out of combat and the mob would have reset immediately. But when you have multiple mobs, it like puts you out of combat, but then you have to remember like there are other mobs around you as well. So even though you drop combat, the mob the whole group is usually not far enough away that Grievous doesn't like just re aggro them. So the group isn't noticing that, I mean, except for the DK that had to walk back. The rest of the group doesn't seem to notice that um, we've pulled these guys. And, okay, they're just now noticing, so they come down to help. And in the process, like, pull a bunch more shit. But hey, we all have bad days, right? So, like, I just assume that they that they were, like, dying of embarrassment, actually, this whole time. I would have been. I mean, I am, actually. And I think the biggest embarrassment for me personally was like, okay, I didn't really need to have done the mana pot, and I shouldn't have done it knowing that there might be a skip next until I actually needed the mana. Um, this is my bad because, like, I need to stay away from these mobs, right? And I, I knew the tank was, like, trying to kite for their life. Ring of pieces up, so I'm, like, trying to see where to put it, but, like, those guys are binding shotted. I just stand here uh, and get seated. Even though if I was smart, I would have realized that some of my team was nearby and I could have uh, possibly saved them. So here's the truth, if you want the real and whole truth. They should have just let my cooldown run down for my for my potion, and then it would have been fine. We wouldn't have had, like, all of these deaths on the board. But, you notice how nobody's being vile in the chat. Like, they're probably fuming on their own end of the computer, and that's totally fine. Like, you can't blame them for that. But, nobody is, like, cussing anyone out or anything. I come up because I'm realizing, like, these people are going to die from Grievous if I don't heal them. And then I get closer, I look for my potion, I use it, and I behave myself. I definitely mess up one time I'm in here, and like, I think I roll, or Tiger's Lust or something with the potion up, and then it's just a disaster. But we get up here, okay? We get up here, it's fine. Everything's fine. Except for my mana is, like, garbo. So, like, knowing my mana is kind of low, if I'm smart, I'll just, like, try to conserve it, which I didn't really do very well. You can see how well the group is doing, like, damage-wise and everything. So it's not like healing these people is in general hard. I don't know why I did Fort Brew. I... You know what, though? At least I was using stuff. 
And you could see how, like, one tick of standing in the blood put me, like, almost equal to everybody else with the avoidable damage taken. So, you know. But even then, like, wow, avoidable damage taken. There's, like, barely any. <laughs> wow, 13k. Hey, don't interrupt me drinking. That's so rude. Alright, so Tank isn't feeling, uh... You know, terribly trusting right now. Should have cocooned the tank or the hunter immediately. But didn't because ugh, it's a cooldown. I was unnecessary there, so... I probably just look like an idiot, but that's fine. If I kill it with a touch of death, does it, like, make up for the fact that I knocked it out of melee? It's, like, the opposite of being helpful in that case, since I believe somebody else stopped the cast. All right, things things are getting getting smoother. I think the rest of the dungeon is like pretty easy in general. So, I'm already thinking about drinking. <laughs> yep. I knew I would be cuz it's like the only thing that goes through my mind, I swear, is like, okay, what am I going to drink next? What am I going to drink next? And my reasoning is just that like I don't know. It's it's one of those things where like if you just don't if you don't have any mana, you can't help anybody. And I was pretty fast on getting rid of Siphon Life, which is, like, probably the most dangerous cast in this dungeon. Nice quiet pool. Not too bad. I could use some more mana, but... Run up here, drink. True healer method. Usually this fight is really easy... Um, and I think most people would agree with me on that. This fight is, like, one of the easiest boss fights. Even on Tyrannical, it's really easy. But, you usually don't get a lot of a chance to drink afterward. So, you, if you can pop through the door fast enough, you can drink afterward. But... That's just not, it's just not always possible, so I like to fill up before this fight just because it tends to be easier for me. That said, if you haven't noticed my big mistake, then I'm going to point it out, and that is I didn't put Mystic Touch on the boss. It would have just been a crackling jade lightning if I didn't want to stand in melee. Of course, now... I would be up there beating the crap out of the boss with everybody else. Because, like, why not, you know? We have our, like, hunter over there wiggling around like a crazy person. Oh, yeah, and, like, the boss is almost dead. It's in, like, execute range, and I'm like, oh, I guess I'll use it now. Cringe. Don't look at me. I'm so cringe. Alright, here we got another group that knows that we're not gonna just, like, be able to kill this mini-boss. <laughs> so they are pulling all the trash. I do heal the pet a little bit there. Depends on my mood if I heal pets. Um... Usually with, like, a class, like a Beastmaster Hunter, or even a Survival Hunter, I would say, I try to heal pets because, like, a hunter can't do anything if their pet's dead, right? And the the group finder 
for example, is supposed to turn off growl on pets automatically when you're in a group. But, and sometimes it shows that it's off, but the pet still, like, just rips aggro constantly, which makes me feel like it's not off. Um, it's definitely glitched in the past, so, like, I try not to hold it against a hunter if their pet pulls aggro or takes damage or whatever. There's a couple of situations and uh, in Shadowlands where you may just want to make sure that the pets don't die, um, even though they're not supposed to take that much damage. Sometimes they still do. Anyway, his pet wasn't in danger of dying. I just wanted to, like... Ensure that it was okay. I don't know. Just me wasting mana again. Don't pay me any mind. Alright, now that all the ads are dead, I'm over here DPSing. We still have time to time this. So, I'm not too worried. I'm trying to get full mana though because I've I've noticed that even when groups are like really really good at everything else, sometimes they still have no idea how to dodge statues. And like obviously the higher level you go, like the more damage the statues do when they hit you, but just want to be at full mana just in case. Even though again, this is like one of the easiest bosses. Uh, except for the, the soak, but we'll get to that. My favorite soak is when I don't have to soak shit, but I'm going to pop my, uh, fort brew and soak with that. If I was going to do it over again, I would have waited another second because AMZ is so good. It's like, eh, I'd rather fort brew just be the only thing up when I soak. If that makes any sense. Like, I, doubling up on defensives is, like, bad. Because then on the next one you won't have a lot to use. Alright, so I used Diffuse Magic in the hopes that it would, like, help here. And it, it does seem to help quite a bit. That gives me a couple of buttons to press. Like, in overall, this group is pretty good. Like, nobody is, like, eating every single mechanic or anything like that. And we timed it, so we're good. I mean, we only plus one it, but look. Who am I to judge? Unfortunately, it only gave me ten points, and I got, like, a side grade, I guess you could say, with the... With the weapon. Um... Also, I was just, like, so tickled that this demon hunter healed themselves after the last, like, traumatizing demon hunter experience that, like, I had to tell them that they did good or whatever. But, like, let's be honest with each other. It feels good to be told that you did well, and if, if, if you have a group where somebody performed pretty well, just send out a word of encouragement. It doesn't hurt anybody. It's just kind of nice for everyone involved. It makes people feel good about themselves. So, I'm feeling positive again, right? Like, I had two crap dungeons, I went to work the next day, I redid my keybinds, I set up Grievous and Necrotic on my bar so I could see it better, and then I had a dungeon that actually just went okay. There was one super embarrassing moment, but it wasn't, like, traumatizing bad. It was just like, ah, nobody complained, everybody was nice, we did great, I'm pleased with it. So with a decent dungeon under our belt again, and our confidence slightly restored, I get back up on the metaphorical horse and queue up for some groups, eventually landing in a plus seven sanguine depths. Alright, we have our team of gamers, we're all ready to go. And this time, a brewmaster monk. So, I haven't talked a whole lot about the weak auras that I use, but one of the weak auras that I definitely got was to track the brewmaster stagger 
And it sounds maybe a little bit silly, but you can see exactly how much damage he's staggering, uh, kind of like next to my voodoo bars up there. And so you can see the number going up and down as he like purifies and other things. The advantage to seeing this is that you know pretty much just what to expect. You know if he's going to like suddenly be taking like quite a lot of damage or not. He's obviously staggering and, and purifying the stagger like as as often as possible. But yeah, you can see he got wiped completely clear there for a second. Um but it doesn't hurt because sometimes, you know, when something bad happens, you know what I mean? And you maybe accidentally like pull too much or something, you know, maybe he'll be taking a lot more damage and he won't, his cooldowns won't be up to purify the damage. At least you know that he needs help. We also have a guy with the elitism helper add-on, and that's just really good for morale in a group. But Bet will be watching to see if he gets hit by anything. Which, you know, he, he just did, so... Again, I've said this before, I'm not a really big fan of the add-on. In my opinion... You're better off with the details plug-in just because <laughs> just because the details plug-in doesn't broadcast it to literally everyone in the group. I I hate that. I mean, don't get me wrong, like there are definitely groups where people are assholes and they kind of need to see that they that they suck and it's them that sucks, not the healer or the tank or whatever. Like it wasn't that the tank didn't have aggro, it's that, you know, maybe maybe you just ate avoidable damage, right? But at the same time, it's like, nothing is more, like, awkward and maybe even embarrassing in a group than seeing, like, that add-on go off constantly. That said, if you do end up in a group like this where somebody has it, just ignore it. Just ignore it. It's it's not the guy typing it out. It's not the guy being specifically rude. Maybe he got it for himself and he doesn't know there's a details plug-in. Like, it could be anything. So we're not going to judge too harshly, okay? But if you're watching this and you're like, Man, it would be, it would be nice to know if I took avoidable damage. Just get the details plug-in. It's called elitism. I also actually just, I'll be perfectly honest, wish it wasn't named that. I feel like if you're making an add-on, like even if it's like actually like a rude add-on, if the if you don't want everybody to assume that it's somebody being rude, then just name it something nice. Like, I don't know, avoidable damage helper or something. Either way, like, everybody on here is taking avoidable damage, even me. And, um, in fact, I'm at the top of the list there. Oops. But... It, you know, and it's still not hard to heal these people, probably because that demon hunter is doing so much damage. I'm trying to, like, kill this guy so I can drink before the boss. Again, it's totally fine to pull the boss when I'm drinking. Just, like, be prepared to, like, need an extra, like, second or whatever. Alright, everybody, well, almost everybody soaked that, so that was awesome. Definitely been in some groups where people just didn't soak it. Um, I'm not actually sure if you can ice block it or not. I'm 
I'm trying to manage these so that it's not like overwhelming, especially with Grievous. I don't want to like end up so far behind on healing that I can't do anything. I should have Fort Brood there. Even though, like, uh, granted, n nobody took any damage. But it's good to be in the habit, because the higher the key level, obviously, the more the damage that that does. But the boss is dead, like, super fast, so we don't really care. And look at my mana. It's, pro it's so low. I mean, by which I mean, it's great. Like, I barely used any. If only every group was like that. We do have an inspiring mob in here, which means, like, nothing can get kicked or whatever. But, like, people are doing enough damage that it's totally fine. We're not- we're not panicking too hard. At least not today. Um, this habit of going to the right to stand in a clear area is dangerous in a plus ten for this particular patch, just because that's where, like, one of the mini-bosses will be standing. Um, also, just as a reminder to people, like, in general, please be careful about standing around doorways and stuff. Yeah, um... I try to have good, like, awareness of where my group members are, so that I can, you know... If I notice that they're out of line of sight, then I can just go to them. But depending on the dungeon, sometimes it's really hard to tell where people are standing. And while some people recommend playing with, uh, like, friendly nameplates up, I don't because it's just, like, more stuff on my screen to clutter it up. And in my experience, I haven't found that it's any more helpful than, you know, just staring at frames. Alright, busted the bindings. We go back in, boys. I'm trying to drink just because you never know about this next room. Um, one of the mages DC'd, but we're not going to just assume, you know, obviously we're not going to just assume that they're gone. Oh, the key's over or whatever. Nah, just keep going. Like People DC all the time. They pulled a mob with them. I should have broke it with, uh, with Tiger's Lust, but I just kind of panicked, I think. Unfortunately, we have a death. Then I get paranoid that I'm going to roll into that room and pull more. Standing on like on the actual platform with everybody else is actually the smarter choice. Um, I since learned that, I guess you could say. Like, I've learned to just stand over here instead of back on the bridge because you can pull stuff on the bridge that you wouldn't pull anywhere else. I didn't really need to sit and drink, but again, it's free, it's mage food. I'm just kind of of the mind that uh, it's free, I should just use it. I was a little bit scared of this guy until I realized how easy the tornadoes are to avoid, it, but only if you're standing in melee. Sit and drink. Did 
damage in this hallway is probably some of the worst. So anytime you get a chance to drink, you definitely want to take advantage of it. I'm not always great at it, but I do my best. Damage doesn't feel too bad right now. I should be in doing a little damage. I'm like kind of dreading the next boss actually like already dreading it because I know how chaotic it is and in a group where people aren't amazing sometimes it can be pretty bad but we have an okay group here and I shouldn't even say okay like I'd say everybody in this group is is carrying their own weight Double ring of peace for extra annoying. Again, you can see how much healing that this tank is doing to himself through his like absorbs and his uh, probably expel harm and a couple of other abilities. So it just again me like seeing this helps me feel a little bit more confident. Like a good tank is gonna do probably about half of my like healing if not more a good tank is going to do like way more but like a competent tank is going to do at least half when you know like i don't expect them to like go out of their way to heal themselves if the damage isn't that high right but when the damage is like moderate they should still be getting some healing out pretty much every tank is like that the one that's like maybe doing the least self-healing is a warrior um and I'm honestly having trouble remembering if I even saw a warrior tank, <laughs> let alone more than one. Alright, so here we go. The true test, this horrible dungeon. It helps to have some ranged in the group because they can take the castigate out and it doesn't it doesn't feel as bad. I don't need to put Mystic Touch on the on the boss because I have a brewmaster to do that. Um, but you can see that I'm already, like, panicking a little. Like, I've still done some stuff. You will My fort brood. You can see already that having Fort Brew on a keybind that is accessible and easy to remember, Shift F for Fort, get it, get it, um, helps me like actually hit it without thinking too hard about it. Boss died so fast, I don't even have to like, I barely had to do anything. And I took the most avoidable damage there and it wasn't even very much. Here's the test of wills here. Can I not roll through here? And I, I pass the test. And you might be thinking, alright, but you've done like nines and stuff. Why are you going back to a seven? And it's a hundred percent because it's a different week than it was when I did Sanguine Depths last time, I believe. So anything that I do 
is going to be score. So I prioritize, obviously, getting score over anything. So anything, any little bit helps when somebody's looking at you through like the Raider IO add-on, right? They're like, oh, how many keys have they timed between when they want to invite you to a 10 or higher, right? Like I think it's the brackets, like 10 to 14. They're like, okay, but how many keys have they timed in the like four to nine range? And if the answer is like, five or 15 that can make a big difference if you get invited to the 10 or not right so i'm hoping that like i'm doing myself a favor and like even though i could have like held out until i got a like a like a nine sanguine maybe or a 10 sanguine i'm just hoping that doing the seven is like well it's another key under my belt but it's also score for me that I definitely need. Things are like nice and easy here. Nobody's really taking avoidable damage. My tank is using cooldowns. I decide to like barely contribute to damage. Grab some orbs. I could have grabbed even more orbs because I, you know, I shouldn't, but if somebody's just going to, like, ice block it or whatever, there, I guess there's no reason not to. The key here is to, like, not move if you don't have to. Um, I can also cocoon somebody here, which I did do. It's like, I, it's like I'm in my past me's mind, and I'm like, cocoon, and past me is like, yeah, I'm gonna. Quickly, mortals. Escape with Sorali. But I shouldn't save it just for that, right? This is the prize you seek. It will never leave this prison. One of my least favorite things, by the way, about this dungeon and any dungeon that has like severe reliance on something that requires an extra action button to press is those things tend to glitch out sometimes, especially when people use add-ons that, you know, may or may not actually be updated correctly. Um, I have had many cases where I could not press my, act my action button because it would get uh, interference from add-ons. Don't like that they make that a thing. You know what I mean? I just think about how embarrassing it would be if I was a tank and I went to press it on the boss and it didn't work because it like add on interference or whatever. Um, Cause it's not like you could just turn off all your add ons, right? I mean, you could, but. I'm already preparing to drink a little bit before we get into the next section because that's the uh, gauntlet. Again, you can drink in the gauntlet, but uh, sometimes it's it doesn't uh, work the way that you want. It's too late for me to drink, so I'm like, mm, I messed up. Basically, if you cross the bridge, it's too late. So, drink before you cross the bridge. I'm pretty confident in this group, by the way. I'm, like, obviously the Demon Hunter is a really good DPSer, and uh, the tank is extremely competent, so I'm not worried about this gauntlet at all. Took a mana pot because, like, just to be safe. But it, I don't think it was uh, strictly necessary. 
more like a precaution. The, the team does enough damage that I feel like I'm not going to have to be too crazy. But you can see the, the uh, monk's uh, stagger was in the red there for a bit. And he needed an extra couple seconds to like stagger or to purify it. So, you know, just want to keep an eye on him and make sure that he doesn't get blasted in that amount of time. It's very unlikely. Brewmasters are pretty easy to heal, I think. Like a good brewmaster. Their damage patterns are like smooth because stagger helps smooth out damage. I'm being a little wasteful with mana here, but that's okay. We have eight stacks of the buff for the first time, like in the dungeon. So, like, we had a Venthyr, but I don't think anybody made that, like, clear to the tank at the start. So he didn't know. But th we finally got to take advantage of that. And, like, it's. I'm not gonna say it's a game changer in this group because, like, we obviously have, like, a very skilled demon hunter, you know, helping out, um, and, and all that, but, like, in a group of people that, like, I mean, I would say, like, right now in 9.2, where, like, eh, things, the difficulty's gotten, like, ratcheted up a bit, being able to, like, utilize the, the lanterns or whatever is a pretty big deal. I got a little bit of a drink in there, which is nice, just to be on the safe side. Again, not contributing a lot to DPS, but I'm I'm helping guys, sort of. I went to go drink again, but I'm in combat, which is fine, of course. Like the uh, the tank decided to line of sight these out into the hallway, which. Depending on the group is probably a good idea just because they it, it can get crowded inside of that room and then it's a little bit hard to like see where things are. But also you avoid like people tab targeting the boss on accident, so that's always good. So I run in here to drink. We have plenty of time by the way. Almost eighteen minutes just to do this boss. I both like and dread this boss, so like I actually don't mind the mechanics of the boss. I think they're okay. Um, really annoying if you're a caster, and I don't like trying to dodge the blur. It's I'm all, I'm like never successful when I try. So like most of the time I don't even try. I'm more terrified of like rolling off the cliff, which is very likely to happen to me. So because I'm dumb. <laughs> So, if I mean, if I'm going to pick one, right, it's, uh, I'll just eat the bleed. I'm not going to roll off the cliff. You have the strength of stone. I fort brewed to, like, make the bleed maybe less terrible. And that seems to help quite a bit, actually. I stood in that. Yikes, an embarrassment right there. But as you can see, like how much damage some of those do, and it's like it's a lot. All right, so we got we upgraded it plus two. Uh, and the tank's like apologizing, like oh, it was almost plus three, and it's like ah, well, part of the reason it wasn't was probably me. Because I had to drink so much. But we'll take it. I got some conduits, I guess. Rip the year is ruined. So, I'm pretty happy with this group. Like, especially after the two bad ones. And then I had two, like, actually really good ones. And this one was even, like, way better than the halls. So, I'm happy with that. I'm... <laughs> 
<laughs> like, I can't express that enough, I guess. Like, it makes a big difference. Alright, so. Good group. Everybody was pleasant. Generally speaking, you're just not going to get a lot of talking in these groups because it is a timed experience, but it is nice when people are friendly. All right, so now we're going to we're going to go to our bingo cards. I'm going to try to be like a little conservative with giving things out for the bingos, right? So for Wholesome Bingo, I'm going to go ahead and say that a feast was placed for all to enjoy because somebody did place one in Halls of Atonement. It was just like really badly timed and so nobody except i don't even know if the guy who placed it got to enjoy it before the key went in but hey he did still put it down and that has to count for something right and then for painful bingo we actually have uh one and that is that the elitism helper add-on guy took avoidable damage which I know it's not really a big deal because he was still, like, the one that took, I think, the least amount of avoidable damage in that dungeon. But, you know, it's still just funny when people have the add-on and then they take damage. Anyway, that's all we have time for today. I don't actually know if the next video is going to be out on time or not. I have some things to do tomorrow, so I won't be, like editing a video like I normally would and my spousal unit will be going on vacation next week uh so maybe I'll get a video out in the middle of the week I just don't know if it'll actually be up on Wednesday like normal or not so fingers crossed I'll have time and energy after work one day this week to work on editing so until next time take care of yourselves and happy healing